Cut your cell phone off, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's your girl, L.A. Mona, a.k.a. Crenshaw Candelia, a.k.a. Uh, Macadocious something. Did y'all know my middle name was Candelia? Is it really? It totally is. Look at Gary like, he can't believe it. My name is Candelia. My middle, I don't want to tell you both my middle names because I don't want y'all to... Um, spell it. How you spell it? Yeah, let's help them spell it so they can Google it. Oh, uh, Stunner Girl's texting you back, guys. Did we start? Yes. Oh, well, keep that. Um, What's the line? I always forget it. I've been listening to Yeet all day. Me and Phelps are on shrooms. There's a stranger in the room named MP, but he don't want me to tell nobody he's here. And Dre's been getting on me all day. Woo, woo. And Gary threw away all our food. (laughs) <laughs> listen when you travel with people and when you like stay together at a certain point everybody's kind of irritated by everybody but with me when i travel with y'all i'm irritated before i even come so it's like you don't Why really gotta that? do nothing y'all get on my nerves hmm. except for gary mm. he don't give a fuck he's offended look at this look at this fucker i know all his lip moves i know you like the back of my hand because i stare at you a lot <laughs> Like I'm always doing, we always doing this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't get you some beignets this morning. We are in LA and I did get five beignets and I only ate five of them because I am <laughs> watching my, my, um, watching my weight. <sighs> I'm enjoying LA. It's freezing. It's colder than a hook. It's hot here. Every night Phelps stays out all night long. Me and Dre <laughs> go to bed praying. <laughs> And I don't think Gary sleeps at all because Gary's always up at three. We enjoy LA though. We like it. You know, the weather really, really sucked here. Yeah, real, it's real shitty bad. right now. Yes, it's horrible. Like, ugh. It's cold. I just got to, everything I packed, I just got to wear it all to, to be warm now. Like at the same yeah. time. Look at this nigga hat. Is that like an LA hat? No. He's freezing. Look at my baby. Where was you at last night, two in the morning? In the studio with Maddox. His life is so lit, right? He was with Mad Ox. That's my man's. What did y'all do? Did y'all make music? He was he was doing some he was doing his music shit. Rick, 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 yeah. Rick, 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 Rick. Okay, I'm listening to a new person. I wanted to start doing a segment on the podcast where I say, "What am I listening to?" <laughs> ridiculously, because when I listen to stuff, I listen to it like crazy, don't I, Phelps? It's really yeah. irritating, very frustrating. For I, I'm cool me. with this one though, because I I put you on right because well, he's controlling. Um, at the end of the day, the guy's name is Yeet. He looks like a white boy. Phelps says he's white and Mexican. I love his music so much. Let me get you a couple songs. I listen to Mad About That, <laughs> Sad About That. So, uh, sorry about that. that. Sorry about that. Mad About That. Popping. Popping. Smoke a burglar. What is that? Smoke-tober. Smoke-tober. <laughs> um, going back to Ella. We in Ella now. Ella. I like Geek though. And you know, I can't even fuck around because sometimes we be on this podcast talking about artists we like and what do they do? We like y'all too. Oh my God. Yeah. Can we come to the show? Yes, we got two tickets. Come backstage. I don't, lit. Ye already lit and I don't know. I don't, yeah, he might not, know who you are no, based he don't on know. Some, I'm just a fucking You feel bitch. me? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can't assume that one. But the music is good. I'm happy. I really like, like the music a lot. And then he's from Portland, Oregon. And it just sounds really, really good when it's loud. I'm big on music. Music, like, you know, it changes my day. Are you enjoying LA? Dre? Dre has a mic back here, all black on. I am enjoying LA. I always like LA. Hmm. Dre got on jeans. I don't know the last time I seen that. Yeah, Jean Dre is more aggressive. Stubbing out tonight. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let's everybody talk. everybody in this group is super like social they go out and hang out and i don't i'm always back at the airbnb all alone sleep that's because you be sleep <laughs> some man offered me 3500 from san francisco for sex and? and exactly what did i say gary what did i say if you collect the money i'll do it over facetime no but <laughs> you see you see what you calls you see what he's doing there what he did there you you know you know I'm a uh what the like a prophet all what's that um 
I don't know. I'm you an a oracle. Lot of things. You feel me? Because no. I called this, and then now that it's happening, you just blurted it out. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say this is real sex. This is real sex, and I do Call not do FaceTime sex. You said that I insulted <laughs> you by saying that. Because like I was, I was such true, a bad person. Babe. That's I don't crazy, do, babe. Come on, man. That's not me. You it always do it. Me I told you. <laughs> He's I took, doing it again. He's I told you. No, no, no. They're going to take you the wrong way, babe. No, no, no. I'm not about to wild out. I was about. You said you always do it. They're going to think. You saying I always get on FaceTime and show my pussy to people. I don't. I'm not talking about that. Okay, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Clear it up, though. No, I was saying you always do the thing where when I say something, it's like, it's, it's cool when they do it. <laughs> when I do it, it's, it's a problem. problem. <laughs> Please, for people remember, at home, remember when I, I do not FaceTime people and show them my cat for money. I don't do it. What I do it, maybe, but I haven't done it. Dre, don't say it like I do it all the time. Dre, you got you to find the episode. The man that wanted to give me $3,500 wants to have sex with me. Good old regular sex, man. Damn, and I think it's the win-win for us. That nigga said he was going. He wanted to do what? He said he just wanted to cuddle, put his fingers through my hair, and rub my butt. Thirty five hundred. That's wild. We ready to text him back. Finesse. Boom. Women, did y'all hear my first plan? Remember I fan from yesterday? We was gonna rob him. The right, we was gonna rob the Mexican guy because he kept circling. He thought I was a prostitute, but this was the trick. Phelps was gonna get his money, let him in, and send him upstairs, and we was gonna have Gary in the bed. <laughs> 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 Gary was with it. But this was well, then it will backfire. We'll be doing <laughs> like <"Yes." laughs> two for one. Yeah, if he with I it. Ain't cut it. I'm by. What's Gary's cut in that? Shit, whatever he won. Listen, he told me here we go. Gary ain't. Bad. I ain't. I ain't. Y'all corny. <laughs> Gary gonna be with it, but then as soon as the Mexican act like he with it too, Gary gonna knock that nigga through the wall. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> The whole bag is that the element of surprise is going to make him run out the crib. Like on some, oh, they trying to fuck with me, you know? Not for 3500 because nah, all he going to do is- No, that guy didn't have 3500 That guy just kept circling the house. They good uh, at playing dumb. He just going to turn around. It was the here in the booty shorts. He going to turn around and just walk back to you. Like, he was why? sitting on the steps like we was in Friday movie. Yeah. And I'm, um, what's the fat one, eh? Dre. Don't get me. Cube. What's the guy? What's the big one? You're not we, smoking. We, we you smoke me when I smoke wet. I want to be the other one. What's the other we one? We always know his name. What's the name? Craig. Oh, Ice Cube. Yes, thank Craig you. Craig wasn't fat. Big Worm was fat. Whatever. What was you about to say, Dre? Let's talk about what? Did you want to talk about your uh, day two of LA food and um, how excited you were about your taco the spot? Shit? Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know what? The I Bill don't... De Beria was crazy. Yeah. Okay, listen. I'm a fan of Berea. <laughs> And I don't know, Berea's like like fairly new for people, and you can't get get it at every Mexican restaurant. Damn, but the Berea that I like is they close it like this. They have meat that they like like roast or whatever, and they put a bunch of cheese and they fry it, and then you then they give you that with a cup of motor oil or soup. Yeah, you take that, you dunk that. It's a cheese pool, a couple limes. You understand? These niggas gave me all these ingredients, poorly chopped onions and cilantro, a big ass cup of red, I don't know, cow foot. Cause she threw me over the door cause she like, we had a burrito, only goat. And I'm like, ho, oh, oh, ho, bitch. I ain't even trying to get like cultural like that. I don't fuck with no goat, nigga. <laughs> Come on now, motherfucker, I'm black, nigga. Give me some regular tacos, nigga. First of all, me and Phelps only like nigga tacos anyway. Nigga yeah. tacos are sour cream, orange cheddar, maybe a Dorito shell, soft. Fl- uh, I don't eat no sour cream though, but go ahead. Some stuff that you say is unnecessary, babe. Nah, cause some it didn't my- fucking matter, bro. I had the joke laid out, my nigga. I was laying it out. You, I don't need that. I'm gonna tell you why it matter. Cause somebody gonna hit me one day and be like, "Phelps, you hungry?" I'm gonna be like, "Yeah." They gonna be like, "I got some nigga tacos for you," and they gonna bring me some shit with sour cream on them. That's how I think. It's just dumb. It's just dumb, man. It's like. Don't that make sense, though? The tacos were fucking horrible. They gave me a bunch of hard-ass tortillas, which are the corn ones, and me and Dre don't like them. They gave me a big-ass cup of soup, this big, bitch, (laughs) why? It was huge. And it was was red, and the meat looked like cow feet, (laughs) and it wasn't right, and it was no cheese (laughs) or pool. That shit was Stinky ass. bitch. How much was that? Who paid? I ain't paid for shit since I've been here, y'all. Who you, paid? You, I paid. You How always, much was it? Uh, 
I don't know. Your shit was probably twenty something, thirty something. Even though, let me tell you more problems. I ordered two churros. Now, if you are a churro lover like me, you know that you notice that now they put cream in the motherfuckers. They put white or chocolate cream. They do not have plain churros anymore. Why? I don't fucking know. Who got that innovative? <laughs> Who thought that would be a good idea? What kinky fuck wanted to put cream? Okay, beige cream in a brown long dick <laughs> churro, nigga. <laughs> Whose fucking idea was that, Esmeralda? But now we stuck with these shits because yeah, they, they flooded all over the fucking country. But this small head bitch never even <laughs> mentioned it. Usually when I order a churro, they say vanilla or chocolate. This small bitch, yes, we have churro. Yes, we do. We do. I get two churros packed with pale cream. <laughs> you, you ate it, though. What? <laughs> <laughs> what that nigga say? He said I ate it. I did not eat it. <laughs> Gary, this, this is bullshit. First of all, you keep deviating. The last two times we went out to eat, I done had it. When, when all else fails, y'all keep laughing this at me. This nigga's an innovator. When all else fails, you get a quesadilla because you know who in the back cooking. This motherfucker getting quesadillas from Ruth Chris. <laughs> but he can't miss. He's never had a bad meal since I've been with him. Dang, I don't Turn know around, this nigga got a childish ass long cheese pool quesadilla. Sometimes he go raw dog, just cheese and Cheese and quesadilla. chicken, yup. Good money. You like the dick. I you? try stuff. I try stuff because I'm in a new place and I want to have good stuff. But I did have um try I had ramen. Stomach. The ramen was good. The ramen was good. That shit looked nasty. Where'd you get it from again? Or this that? was the part that was weird. The egg was like it wasn't done. It was green eggs and ham. Oh, the food hall downstairs. The food hall don't even sound good. What is it called downstairs, brother? Did you ever have a ramen? Now the niggas that work up here don't we eat it. We didn't fuck that shit. Up. Light ain't it, bro? I was supposed to be runny. Okay, yeah, I threw that shit out. The, oh, egg? the hood, yeah, that's crazy, nigga. Bull that shit. What's what are y'all doing? I, it was, wasn't it like brown or something? Nigga, it was it was hot. What do you call it? Runny. It was runny. It was good though, but it was runny. They fucked me up once I seen it. Anyway, fast forward. Um. But I'ma just I probably say in totality, yes, it sucks. Oh yeah, and then I beat y'all that night too with the um with the uh, lobster ravioli. You're Alfredo. better than us. Thanks. Thanks nah, folks. y'all just be trying My to get Caribbean too kinky. Was food I, was good. Yeah, Dre don't complain. Dre busts everything down. You don't count. Okay, you had oxtails, Gary. What did you have? Oxtails. Yeah, oxtails. I had jerk Gary's chicken. oxtails taste like pinto beans. Pinto beans and sardines. That shit was horrible. Shout out to the Jamaicans downstairs. That shit ass. And she gave me a vibe. <laughs> she gave me a vibe like she was so hurt that I ain't get it. Cause she was like, What what can I get for you? And I was like, give me a second, I'm gonna order soon. Then I slid off to the ramen joint. And I, she did. gave me that little look across the thing, like, damn, bitch. Yeah, I got you see, I got the beef patties in the tin and got up out of there. Wasn't filling your oxtails. Like, how you fuck that up? Like, nah, I'm cool. You like that jerk chicken? It was jerk. I don't trust you. It just like wasn't that. enough cabbage. Like I feel like with everything you gotta have balance, and it was like a lot of rice. They and put peas. motherfucking lettuce in uh Gary's cabbage. <laughs> I kid you not. It Gary's was. cabbage had a streak of lettuce in it. They got kinky on that shit. Mm. Whatever, but LA. yeah, LA. I don't know. This LA visit was cool. I guess you got. You, we got to remember the first as LA. The first word in LA is lost. Just what the fuck does that mean? What? Please. Somebody else, tell me. It don't make sense. That's what I'm saying. Oh, gosh. That's um, funny. Every, like, mad people. Oh, yeah. some I, I got a good food recommendation. They said it's downtown. What's it called, baby? Uh, Chef Grizzly. Mad motherfucker sent me him. You ever, is, you ever heard of shit, MP? Grizzly. They said. <laughs> Where you eat at, though, then? Like, out of the downtown? Oh, okay. All they right. said they said it's a little tax. It take long, but it's good. What is it? Soul food? Yeah, like the seafood. You know, you know, niggas cook the same thing. Lobster, lamb LA. chops, mac and cheese. Niggas cook the same shit. First of all, I personally am disgusted with the amount of lamb chops niggas is feeding niggas. I don't I don't get it. I love lamb chops play along. Like that was like something that we all watched together and everybody just chopping it down and so open with it. Eating it in the club. Lamb chops play along. You sitting in the VIP with a bone hanging out your mouth eating a lamb chop. A lot of joints look like lamb chops play along. Y'all are freaks for that. Um, listen, it's a, I wanted to talk about the 20 minute theory. 
Explain that. I read that any bad habit, not 20 minute, um, 20 day. 21 day. Yeah, any bad habit that you have, you can break it in 21 days. Let's say you scarf down a dozen of donuts at nighttime because you're horny and it's been a long time. You ain't fucked in a while and you by yourself. You know what I mean? And you're a comedian. You can't trust Strong people. Water. Right? For if example. I wanted to stop or three Snickers ice cream bars, if I wanted to stop <laughs> sucking them bitches down, if I made it 21 days of no Snickers ice cream bars as I lay my fat ass in my bed at nighttime, then I could break it and I don't have it at all. Works with cocaine, heroin, all of it. Is habit and addiction the same thing? You believe everything you read? Is habit and addiction the same thing? Damn, this nigga always got a good question. You believe everything you read, though? Is habit and addiction? No. Us, no no habit and addiction at the same thing? No, thing. right? Because addiction, you have to do it. Habit is like, you do I, it. People relapse all the time, even after. They could be like three months, you Addi- know what I mean? Addiction is... That's I, a little different, I guess, than like What you know about habit. that? What you know about drug rehabs and relapses and shit? What you know about it? Only the things that I read. I went to college for that. Did you know that? <laughs> for, for what? <laughs> 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 With the PU, Dre, Dre loves me, <laughs> right? The PU, and he's one of the most shadiest niggas I've ever met, and he loves me to death. I'm scared for the people that you don't like, bro, because I know you love me, and you don't want to like hurt my feelings. You just laughed at my face as I said I went to college for something, <laughs> like a genuine look at his laugh. He's so happy. <laughs> You went to college for what? I went to community <laughs> college in 2012 because I had got a job in the methadone maintenance house. And, like, I got into that world of, like, drug counseling type vibe. And, um, okay, this is going the wrong way. Let's just back out. You know why? Because the, the way you're breaking we, it. Can the, we back this out? Can we just cut this off? Because out? we we waiting to, to hear the real motive. The, why, listen, why the fuck you was over there doing that listen, bullshit? I worked, I worked there, right? And then I had when I went to jail, I had to go through drug programs. So I kind of knew the ropes of it a little bit. And then drug counseling, I kid you not. You might have a person. I'm dead serious now, seriously. All the people that is in this field at home was going great. You can have eight years of schooling. You know what I mean? You can have a doctorate. But if you have tattoos and felonies, they take you more serious. So you could kind of climb to the top with a bad record versus having a good record. You know what I'm saying? And with me being on court felonies early, I was always looking for a job that was like fit for me. So that was like, okay, that's going to work because they with that. I would see them disrespect doctors, you know, Especially ones that were like foreigners, whatever, whatever, not paying no mind. But it'll be a young bitch coming in with two teardrops Cut. and a missing tooth. You and, know why? Because she, she has experience. I'm about too. to say it's relevant work experience. Right, exactly. Technically, it's, it's relevant work experience. Honestly, in that realm, they want to get their sobriety from a sober person. They want to know that, that you shit in the alleyway, wipe mm-hmm. your ass with Stickers Bar Rapper too, and you was sucking dick for crack too. Like, it, listen, the classic movie scene. David Chappelle, he raised his hand. I'm here for I've been here for smoke of weed because they actually, well, you know, yeah. what you're, he go what I suck dick for crack, nigga. Remember that? <laughs> but it's true though. They take that more serious. But yeah, I went to school in 2012, Community College of Philadelphia. Had a really good like drug whatever program. But you know why I gave up on it because I found out like after getting a social degree, you make like fourteen dollars an hour. There's no money in it now. In the ownership side, because I wanted to own recovery homes too. At a point, that's where the bread at. You own the whole house, get bunk beds, vending machines. Machines, quarter machines on the washer and the dryer. Real shit. 12 steps on the wall. That's a fucking bag. Niggas is eating off of that shit. Three of them in the hood. You know what I mean? Especially if you get like contracts from the government and the people come from jail or rehabs. It's paper in that, baby. I was on that. I was going to do it. Niggas in Philly be out of pocket with their shit. If you smoke crack, it lasts for seven seconds. The high? Mm Mm-hmm. What's the best way to get drug, um, a drug, um... A drug screening. What's the most efficient way? Urine, blood, or hair? We asking you, Dre. We know. Come on, Gary. This nigga to why we know. What's the best, the, the, the most efficient? Efficient way to get a drug screening, urine, mm-hmm. blood, or hair? Yeah. I would imagine that efficient means the quickest, right? See, he's smart. And efficient mo- and less money and stuff, too. It'll probably be urine. Yeah, it is. It's urine. It's I got smart. drug tested in college. Wow, Drake. As an athlete, Did and it was all it? it was all urine, of course. Did you pass? Great. But you, you wasn't getting juiced up? I was not getting no juiced roids? up. No roids? Nah. Is roids common in like college football? No. Yes. 
You roy sometimes? I plead the fifth. I didn't do it. All right. But it's coming. Whoa. Some people do it. Or they take some type of performance enhancing Something. thing. Now, that's and, a fact. One but of, that's illegal. One of my homies said he used to snore Adderall and go crazy. That's not a fucking steroid, though. It's a it's an enhancer, though. I guess so. Snorting yeah. it at that. That's deep. I know somebody that <laughs> used to snore Percocet before they played basketball. See? That's wild. They was the they were they wasn't good. That? They wasn't good. Nigga thought he was Shaq. He right? thought he, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. He was out. You see this hat I got on? He was like me, flipped from above the rim. He was hooping by himself on the roof with nobody else. All right, so we're gonna all lose our bad habits in 21 days. Phelps, you, we. That's not a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> I come up with something else. I don't feel like you have bad habits because I feel like Phelps is like disciplined because like literally you just gave up soda for no reason. I was like, he's such a weirdo. <laughs> you only have a gut, bitch ass nigga. So I'm like, you not drinking soda, nigga. I just drank three ginger ale's for breakfast. I relapsed with you let, you with my last night. We're, we, it's getting tight. Okay, let's just talk about the room beef because let's just cut the, the tension. Gary threw away all our stuff. <laughs> I had mangoes, two lemon cool. slices, and I kept craving lemon water today. Today's the day I wanted to get, put some citrus in my water and cut it. No thanks to Gary, he got rid of it. And he threw away Drake jerk chicken that he take two bites of per day for protein in the morning. <laughs> and he threw away Drake chips and Drake had guac left. Yeah, I was pretty mad about that. Dre got mad because he said I woke him up this morning because I was being loud. I had a jail visit on the phone. And Phelps came in late. Smelling like pussy. Now she lying and on And I me. don't do nothing. That's the thing. Like when it comes I, to us I in the room. I stretch the truth to be funny. It's an insult. She could just say whatever about me. And it's I know just, you might be messing up something for folks. It is. Oh, like I say he came on from smelling like pussy? Nah, she different pussy. Up. Every single day <laughs> he came on from smelling like different man. pussy. You're insulting me. I don't like it. That is not insulting. You're insulting me. I don't he like it. He is such a fucking freak. How is that the same as you telling people that I FaceTime and play with my pussy on a regular basis? It's the same. You know why? Because we're both stretching the truth from about shit you know what the problem is and you, you be coming at my character that. is that's coming at your character because you got no pussy? not no 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 not in that moment <laughs> but you do become my character so I what just, did i say phelps you call me a contrarian that's like a character that's like about my character i don't never say talk about your character i stretch the truth about shit phelps, in real life that happens phelps. How the fuck is you being a contrarian about your character you are a contrarian phelps and you agree when we first talked about it and that's why i talked about it's, it on camera it you still could be an secret? insult is that, is it, no, no fuck as it could be, is it? Are yeah. you insulted by it? Yes. I'm not taking it back. You know why? Because. Because <laughs> it's fucking true. You disagree with Phelps. I'm going to tell you, what, you go no, ahead. I'm going to give you an example. Go ahead. No, is it, a, listen, I don't care about no example. It's real random how you coming at me. This is what I'm saying to you. What the fuck, like, what the fuck do you call that? Devil's advocate what you do? Like, seriously, you don't think that you're a contrarian. You don't think that you don't go with, like, the popular opinion. You're more unpopular opinion, boy. You don't think that about yourself. This is the thing. When I say, as soon as I say something that, that you deem whatever it is, this nigga's a contrarian. That's like, that's that's like uh, if, if a nigga frustrated with a woman, he won't go say this bitch. Oh, this broad. Like, you want to call me a bitch? Like, just say that. You don't no, got, like, no. you feel me? I like, really think, I really think, especially from being around you, any debate you've been in, any of that, I think you're a contrarian. I think if everybody in the room either is way, the same thing, even if you really do agree, you're going to find something to flip it either, in. Either way, it's, I feel like an insult is closer to judging somebody's character. I'm, it's not an insult if I say, oh, I saw a Mona fell down the steps and bust her elbow. That's not an insult, my nigga. I just reported what I saw. Cut all this out. I don't know where this is coming <laughs> from. I don't know what's wrong with where did that come from? I'm trying to show you. You said he walked in the house smelling like pussy. Pussy, and you said that wasn't an insult. <laughs> so where did this come from? What do you know? I did say it was an insult. Oh, so you were insulted by saying you can't smell like pussy. Yes. See, you don't even see, you're not even taking me serious. This this is the conflict. I asked you, was that insulting? And you said it wasn't. No, I started off by saying I'm insulted by it, and you just was pushing it away. You just was like, no. Y'all just like an old married couple. This nigga get on my nerves. I um, literally started out said I feel insulted, and then you just start going I'm sorry that I said that you smell like pussy last night. <laughs> I'm really sorry, and I'm sorry that you said that I said that you smell like pussy every night, different pussies. I'm sorry that I said that from the bottom of my heart. You accept her apology? Let's continue with the show, man. I ain't mean it no way. <laughs> um, I know. Where buddy. was we at? We were talking about the tension in the in the, in the room. Okay, before that, where was I at? 
Um, we were talking about food. We were talking Terrible. about Terrible. Twenty one days to break a habit. So we could have all got together and broke our own individual habits for twenty one days. What's your bad habit you gonna break? Um, I haven't been drinking that much lately. <laughs> uh Dre turned on itself. <laughs> that was so random, Dre. I wouldn't even have thought that. That's only did you know something about negative? That's like the only negative thing you can think of. I'm just trying to get into a routine. So like I've been waking up trying to wake up at 7 a.m every day no matter what day it is just to like start like 7 a.m run and listen to like the same song every morning so that it like gets me in a routine to start my day in What's the right headspace it's a or kurt it private it's a kurt franklin song brighter okay. day it's All like right. a you know like a uplifting like song okay. to just get your day started and get you in the right headspace and then you just start your day and I feel like when I've done that, I've been more productive throughout the day. That's fucking heavy. So if you, besides you wanting to get up at seven, how 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 late do you get up normally? Nine. When I want to. So what's <laughs> average like eleven? Well, I, don't, I don't sleep past. No, I don't sleep that late. So it'll either be like nine thirty ten. But it's like the thing is that when you wake up that late, by the time you shower, do all that shit, it'd be like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, and you like, dang, where did the day go? And then I feel like no matter who you are, by the time you hit like six, seven, you want to start winding down a little bit. PM. Yeah, PM. And then I got my wife, so you want to spend time with your wife and eat. Do y'all get up at the same time? No. I mean, now we kind of do. She normally, it depends. She takes like workout classes in the morning, so it depends. But 7, 7.30 is what time we get up. But I've been waking up like at 7, so. If a nigga getting up at 9 a.m., first of all, if you on an entrepreneurship and you make your own schedule, if you could get yourself up in the morning and, like, get going, that's lit. Because technically, you really don't have to, really. Exactly. You could really push everything for, like, 3, 4 o'clock and just live that life like a fucking bum and be up all night and then sleep all day. That's hard. What make you do that? What make you do what? Like, want to get up at 7. That's just some real, like, oh, I want to be grown shit. Because after a while, you realize that, like, you know, nobody's going to, like you said, there is nobody there who's going to get you up and say, like, you got to do this, you got to do that. But I don't know, with an entrepreneur mindset, tomorrow is not guaranteed. A client could drop, you could lose a contract. Oh, then, God. Um, somebody could not pay an invoice. Like, so you just <laughs> always grinding, trying to create new sources of income and you know, I don't think around. people understand that. And I think nowadays, because we got this big like gold rush of black people starting businesses, everybody just want to do it. And people don't really know if it's good for them. Some niggas need a supervisor. Well, you got some underst- of you bitches need somebody to write you up. You got to understand the difference between being an operator and an owner. Like, it's okay to be an operator to where you aren't the owner of the business and have all that responsibility, mm-hmm. but you can operate it and be like the CEO or the VP of something where you control a division of a company or you have the autonomy to do stuff without actually having to own it. Everybody's in, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur everybody, who ain't an entrepreneur. Yeah. That, it's, and everybody want to be on boss mode, chief mode. No, it's not enough Indians out here. Me personally, from like running into people that do this, because even with me, it's like, I know where I could tighten up at and I know where I, like, I know where I could tighten up at in every way you know what i mean but in my head when i meet people that like i don't know how to explain it like y'all just be just i don't know i don't know what you call that if you call that laziness or you just get into the same type of thing like for me every time something slid across my desk i was like fuck it i'm gonna try it like it wasn't nothing out that they you know what i mean nobody came at me and i'm like okay i'm not gonna do that and then it was like on top of that whatever i tried to do like i really really tried so then it was like if i didn't fuck with it i knew for a fact that i didn't want to fuck with it you know what i'm saying versus like some people i know they got teams and the team push you push you push you and as soon as you switch teams or something like that you kind of lost you don't know what to do it's like I don't know how bitches consider themselves entrepreneurs. And that go for people in the beauty game, too, Gary. I see that all the time. Them bitches that do hair have potential to be fucking rich as fuck. Like, it's so much bread in that shit. Like, I've seen so many black women change their whole lives off fucking wigs, bro. Like, mansions, bro. And then you got other motherfuckers that can't get their phone to ring. So, I don't know. I don't think it's very everybody. I think it's nothing wrong with having a boss. And playing your position, playing your part, till that shit work out for you. I don't know. I don't know why everybody want to be a boss. Everybody can't transition a hustle into a business. Like, some people can hustle, 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 but they don't know how to make the hustle an actual business. What you mean? Um, Like, scaling. 
scaling a business. Like you could start, I feel like there's a lot of different types of entrepreneurs. You have people who are more strategists, you have subject matter experts, but then you have some people who are hustlers who could sell sand to the beach. They could sell anything, but they'll always be hustling for the next 10 years because they don't know how to scale that and stop exchanging their time for money to be able to have people start working under them and stuff like that to, you know, grow. Mm. You just always going to be hustling every day. You're going to see that same person out in the corner getting the same I mean, thousand bucks or 500 bucks he, because they don't know how to scale But that. even like, for instance, even with the entrepreneurship shit, it's like the way people try to categorize it to make it seem like they at the top is not necessarily what it is anyway. Entrepreneurship yeah, not. is really not. Don't mean even mean you a boss. It's just you working amongst more independent than a motherfucker who clock in on a schedule. You feel me? So it's like a exactly. motherfucker be like, well, I'm an entrepreneur the whole time. You're not paying yourself. You going out here getting money from other people, just like the other motherfucker that's employed. You just don't got to wake up at nine and get off at five like the rest of the world. It's you like, feel me? It's like what we were talking Entrepreneur about. Entrepreneur do not mean balls. It just mean independent. That's like, that's true. It's like when we talked about if you say you want to be a comedian, people are always going to go to who they see as comedians, Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy. And you like, yo, there's so many more comedians under that that are still successful mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But people always think the biggest thing. And I think that's what you're saying is like, I'm starting yeah. a business. They thinking Nike, like business, business. And it's like, no. nah, like I make, you can say like, I make $70,000 a year. And yeah. I just, instead of working for somebody and doing it, I'm working for myself and doing that. And you can do both. Like I, it's nothing wrong with doing both. Like if you look at somebody, say like an artist or something, like a, a rapper, producer, you feel me, whatever. It's like, yeah, when he make an album, he the fucking, it's his album when he the, he the rapper, da, da, da. but when he a producer, motherfucker, you gonna send that beat and you gonna hope that it make the album. You not, you feel what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. gotta, you, it's gonna, your role is gonna change where, where, where you at, what you doing. It's like, you're not gonna be the boss every time. You, you're not gonna be a, the, the fucking janitor every time. You feel For sure. me? It's just what you bring to the table. I agree. And she's scrolling on Instagram. Disrespectful. Nah, the, um. It's cool when they do it. The, when I do, it's a problem. The Mexicans, them people, Garrett told me about the Mexicans. I thought he was talking about white people. The four Mexicans, four black people went to Mexico to get a tummy tuck. It's two girls and two boys. They, the whole, I don't know, some group of niggas, I don't know if it was the cartel or what, but it's a whole video of them like getting jumped. It's scary as shit. Because bitches go out of town to get work done. That's some scary shit. They said they did it by mistake, Gary. It was the wrong people. They can't the wrong people. They was regular people. They came in here for a tummy tuck. Out of four of them, one made it, and then two of them are die die, and one of them is like on the brink of death. That's fucking scary as shit. But when you first said it, like, oh, you know, them people got kidnapped by the cartel. I'm thinking in my head, they probably ain't pay them people no money. I really always think like when people die real violent, crazy like that. I always think it was for them. Like I rarely think it's a mistake because I seen people do a lot of crazy shit. Yeah, it's a fifty thousand dollar. It was a fifty thousand dollar reward to find them, and they really found one. That's a shame. Prayers to them people's family. That's, That's not the. Up. Not that case, but I be hearing about that in them third world countries. Why is it always they be missing hits? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, wrong motherfuckers get shot. Remember, um, David Ortiz. Remember he was in oh, DR, yeah, DR and like, yeah. you feel me? It's like, come on, like, who's David Ortiz? Like, Very popular, famous baseball yeah, player, like a baseball legend. And they kidnapped him by mistake. Nah, somebody shot him, but they like the nigga wasn't David Ortiz from Dominican Republic, and he one of the greatest baseball players ever. So you know he like a god out there. You feel me? So wow, wow, west of Mexico, him. baby. I got close family where went to Mexico to get um, work done before. I don't know. It's common. I want to go a couple places to get some work done. You just said know. it's dangerous. It is dangerous, but I still want to get my shit done for half. The fuck. So we took nine thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. You get it for four. Fuck y'all talking about. Come on now. Veneers twenty thousand dollars. You can get it for five. You feel like you gotta go out of the country to get better work done, or just better Fuck price? No, I don't think it's better work. I just think it's um better price. This should better be. price, and it's common. So it's like you go to a plastic surgeon in some of them countries, bro. Over here, they might be churning out. Five, six girls a day. Them niggas doing 30 bitches a day, bro. In and out, in and out. Everybody just limping out bloody. But I feel like how people say how I go out here is that sometimes if you got like a following or something like that, 
they'll put you like earlier in the day with the doctor or like give you more care because essentially your body the is popular people is like the work of art for that surgeon so right. they'll like take their time so i'm good because yeah. <laughs> i'm clouded up <laughs> you go to miami you'd be straight you feel me no but um it's a couple different things with the surgeons here you have to be like board certified you know what i mean you got to fast mm -hmm. certain things and then some of those doctors were here first and then they might have killed uh, the bitch or two or, you uh, know missed the inspection and then they had to go back home you know what i mean but it's like for the most part you could do your own little research you know what else is crazy over there that's really crazy they don't have anesthesiologists mm. so you We're here. No, I don't know. But what, I, it's been did, so many. The trans lady. What did Gary say? So, so she went to jail. Can hear it. Oh, what Gary said was, you remember about the girl that was um, her license ran out or something, but she was still doing stuff to people, and then she killed somebody. I mean, that kind of stuff happens a lot, of, a lot. But I know it was a trans woman in Philadelphia, and she killed somebody from the UK in a hotel, but she was doing illegal butt shots. Mm. You remember that? Yeah, that yeah, that was a big deal. I remember that. But um. I don't know. It's just a real want and a crave for this shit, and it's expensive. That's just like that big teeth rush. Niggas is doing braces right now on Instagram for five hundred dollars. You can get veneers on Instagram for fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars from a bitch that used to do lashes. That's just how people are. They they want it, so they will do whatever they got to do for it. The countries that is really popular: Brazil, DR, Colombia, Mexico. You can go over there and get. And then let me tell you something about Mexico. Mexico is like number one in the world for weight loss surgery. They beat Texas. Texas. So a lot of people went over because you get a weight loss surgery like a um a gastric sleeve, a gastric bypass, something like that. 11,000, 12,000. Here you get that bitch for four, 5,000 over there. And the motherfuckers is like goats with that shit. Mm. I know here people be trying to get it through their insurance, but I know you got to prove like a whole bunch of like, stuff you can get stuff through your insurance you can get something called care credit right now you could pay your yeah, titties no off financing 99 dollars a month you paying these titties off like a fucking kid sedona yeah could pay for us i'm pro plastic surgery even though i have noticed all these black girls getting their lips done and it makes me feel strange but everybody can't have my lips <laughs> I might get two pumps here and here. What do you think? Because yes. my bottom lip is bigger than my top lip. I feel like your lips are fine. That's how women are. We always want like a tweak or, you know, a tweak or a twerk. It's just better when men stay out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I realize that being married, it don't matter what you say. They're going to feel how they, women going to feel how they're going to feel. And the thing about us is it never stops because ageism is so huge here. You like dead. You know what men call women by age? What? Dinosaurs. <laughs> they do. I've, I've they never They call heard women that. my age dinosaurs. Who is they? What men? It what age are the viral, men? Listen, it went viral. Nobody's on, it, ever called her that. It went viral on Instagram like it. 2020. And then it was like they broke it down like on Twitter. Like the dinos, baby dinosaurs. Which time was here? I know Tom will remember it. They used to call bitches my age dinosaurs. But well, they still do. I mean, here it's so weird because it's like you want to be, um, you want to be like, like you want to be young forever in a way. But then it's like. Do you? Don't you want to get older? Like, feel like you got wisdom and shit? You should be lucky if you get old in a certain way. But it's different with men and women. You could be 40 and still considered, like, sexy. A 40-year-old woman, people be calling her grandma. Unless you like J-Lo. False, 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 what? false. Is this what? what? That's mine. That's just my experience, folks. It's just, you know, what You're not 40 yet. Experience. You said bitches forty. They call it. You're not forty yet. They, I've been the dinosaur thing starts at thirty. I've, I, what I'm it's, it's you keep saying false like I'm lying or something. It's five men in this room. Me. Nobody's never heard it or said it. Okay, so am I, you think I'm lying? I didn't something? say you was lying. I said it's not true. You said false, false, false. <laughs> That's what you said. You're irking the. That's fuck not you out of lying. Me. I'm saying. I'm Everything, saying, Nick. Bro, oh my God, you're busting the fuck out of me. Um, because I disagree. Because you keep chatting. Like, what's up with you? You all right? You cool? I've been quiet you most of this episode. Too, since you got insulted because I said you smell like pussy. Is you straight? You no. Good? I've been quiet most you of this fuck? episode. 
Mm-hmm. I've been bust most of this episode. We can wrap this shit up. This shit getting on my fucking nerves. Like we can wrap it up then. I ain't about to. You want to go to the voicemail? Weirdo, yeah, play it. So this is I just picked this one. Didn't really listen to it, so we're gonna see what uh surprise we have today for this one. Let's see. Hold on, let me hook it up to the... Okay. Hi, Don't Call Me My Girl Podcast. All right, so I'm watching this to this episode, and it made me think of a question that I've been having, and I've been watching, um, I'm going to give it to it, but DJ Academics, I watched the Chris Sean, Blue Face, um... Sharp interview. What do you think about all these sassy industry men? Like, these niggas are sassy as fuck. Like, it's not even, like, no masculinity. They be on that get back petty shit. Like, it's scary. And then I'm starting to see, like, my male counterparts act sassy as shit. Like, say, oh, what's the hair for me? It's a, even when my son was on that, he's talking about your lace front, like, can you go smoke a big blunt and go get some money and do some man shit? I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about these fancy ass niggas that get out. I love y'all. Who did she use for example? Academics. Academics. Sharp? Well, I she like was talking sharp. about she was talking about the blue face sharp, but I think she was more referring to academics. Um, I don't know. I don't know about academics. I went to academics a while ago because of the Fresh and Fit podcast. And I might have changed my mind a little bit because I heard academics give like he was coming at one of them niggas and he was debating about something. And niggas always win and start those arguments with you a bitch. You're not a street nigga. You never been in the streets. You never been in jail. You're not a real nigga or whatever. His comebacks was so fucking vicious, but they was all on like I'm a square vibes. And I respected that. You know what I'm saying? Like he is a square. He always been a square. He's you know, he was like. Whatever the guy said, the guy was like, yeah, you're not street smart. You're not like, a, uh, you know, I was about to say accredited. <laughs> you're, not, <laughs> you're not street certified. And he was like, yeah, nigga, I'm not. If I wasn't doing this, nigga, I'd be working at a hospital. Like he was talking so heavy about his education, how much he went to school. And I was like, damn, this little fat ass, I think that's lit. Like I respected that. Like I don't know, it just made me look at him a little bit different. Is he still like... An asshole, yes, but he kind of earned where he was at as far as, like, doing it on the internet vibe. And the fact that he's totally okay with being, like, a dweeb, I respect that. Because I want other black men to know, like, every black, every representation of a black man is not going to be somebody like Sharp, who's a P, or somebody like Whack, who's a blood, or somebody, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Even, like, shit, you see Gillian Wallow. Wallow's a part of a person, but he did 20 years in the penitentiary. You feel me? It's a lot of black men, I feel like, when they do look at stuff, like when can you see a person that's college educated, but he's still cool or somebody has never shot a gun openly about that, never been in a fight, whatever. Like how often does he get to see that person and feel comfortable with, with whom he is? My son is eight years old. My son feels like a dweeb because he likes Celine Dion because his sister does him, you know, because mm-hmm. he don't want to listen to rap. And I'm constantly telling him like, you so special because you don't listen to rap. We all listen to rap. You know how cool that makes you because you don't do what we do. You do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But that made me look at academics a little different. So I don't know if I'm going to call them sassy. Now, in general, the the time of the sassy potter is here. Um, I talked about that girl, that comedian. She makes fun of the, of the sassy podcasters. And it's like super extreme. Um, oh, yeah, you a whore. You had sex with two men last year. You a whore. I like that girl's <laughs> videos, but they funny as shit. And it is real. And it is like a big sassy thing. And, and I think the biggest problem we had with those guys and the guys that's on Internet posting the memes that's negative about women all day and acting all strange. You just come off like you like you like butt and not girls you know what I mean like boy butt and I don't want it to be like a thing because it's one thing I know it's hard to come out but it's like some of y'all date women and seem like you hate women I think that's more what she's talking about but I just don't entertain myself with that I don't listen to the shit like that I don't watch it you're not gonna see me on the Andrew Tate website you're not gonna see me on some of these male podcasts even as a fucking guest like I'm turning it down I don't want to be with you niggas and argue about you know because that's all it is it's like 
men versus women and I'm supposed to represent all the whores and then they're like, yeah, we pay the bills, you, I am the table. <laughs> so, not that answer a question. I got a lot of DMs. I don't know if I, um, it's cold as fuck here. Hold on. I don't think this lady knows who she's talking to. Hold on. I think I might scrap the dark side of the DM. It's coming. You think so? Yeah, I'm tired as of as them. a full segment, you could just feel like the I questions just, are all the same. It's a lot of them are fake, um, and I just I just feel like they people press to like get their little time, you know, like we lost the, the cool part of like it being real. This ain't real no more. Hey Mona, I've been fucking with you and everyone on your podcast for a minute now because the shit blah 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 blah. I got a rotation of three niggas: my baby daddy when he act right, my man who's a chef, and my nigga he's a rapper. <laughs> what the, what they do is important as far as stepdaddy wise. Oh, she got two stepdads, three stepdads. I'm starting to catch feelings for my man, but he be disappearing sometimes, which makes me think he got a bitch. But for a few weeks now, my nigga started talking, taking me out a lot and giving me weed, letting me hold money, hold money, making me think he catching <laughs> feelings. That's crazy. I'm not even going to start on my B-Day. I can't even see these niggas in daytime. It's getting a little stressful. I'm working, I'm in school, but I'm a single parent. I want to know if I should keep, which one I should keep or cut them all off or focus on one. So like, her, girl, huh? Let's see why I don't want to do it no more. So How am I man, supposed to know that? Her man is her main. And her man's a chef. That's the main, I guess. And the, her nigga is her side nigga. Yeah. And then she has her baby father. And the nigga is a rapper. Mm. Drop the rapper. Like, drop the rapper and keep the chef. And, you and can't get rid of no. the baby. Oh. Daddy? Catch us next week. I'll manifest something. Okay, what you want to manifest? I am manifesting this weight loss journey that I'm on. Anybody want to join me, they may. <laughs> Gary, are you with me? Me and Gary together. He already started because he works out every morning. We were supposed to do 7.30 a.m. workouts on this trip, and we didn't get to because Dre is so off task most times. Y'all know long enough not to believe Mona. So, start me on this weight loss journey. <laughs> I am getting on the needle like everybody else, and I will let y'all know how it is. Was that all? You know what my... my, 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 my um. Like my point, my starting point, like what I want to make it to when we go to DR. Can we say we're going to DR yet? Oh, you mean end goal? Yeah. Got gotcha. you. DR. Can we say we're going there? He said we were good, but I'm still getting Is things ink dry? together. Ink has not dried yet. Oh, fuck. Why well, I need another one. Roots picnic then. Because that's around the same time, right? Around the same time. Like within a week? Yeah, it's the, actually the next week. We could do weigh-ins. Y'all want to put money in? We go all put money in. And y'all give me the money if I do it. What if you don't? Do we get the money? No, we just start over. <laughs> 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 we could do it like that. We can. Let's do it. Gary, you with me? We doing weigh-ins. Okay. You Dre doing that thing with his mouth. You did? That was a flex. I'm the only nigga trying to gain weight, so. I lost six foot. You get in with the weight gain. We could do that. Come on. Okay. What you going to do, muscle memory? I'm the only one who worked out on this trip. Oh, when? You know, you <laughs> when you ran to get them beignets? Show <laughs> over. Catch us next week. Next week, we're doing three episodes. Mm. Okay. I'm going to have this code on next episode. <laughs>